So good evening, members, okay. staff, and members of the public. Welcome to this meeting of Marlborough Community Board. Hey. Um, it has been recorded, but it's not live streaming to YouTube. Um, the meeting is held in the Wahinga Centre in Marlborough, 11th of July, commencing at 7 o'clock. Brief health and safety um, identified. If we do have to evacuate, could we go and meet outside? in the uh, appropriate location and wait until we get the all clear to return should that happen. Would you like to do the current year? I just got one, sorry, not too much happened with my Stella, so. <laughs> yeah, sure. So it came out now, will you do, will you do the curve here, please? You got it. That's okay. Mel, well, can you do the character? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> kia ora te marino, kia paunamu, te moana, hei huarahi mā tātou i te rangi nei, aroha atu, aroha mai, tātou i a tātou katoa. Hui e tai ki. Thank you. I don't know why my, my community boards haven't gone up to Jane. Now, extraordinary business. Do we, we have that extraordinary business? Extraordinary business? Yes. yes. Yep. So, one item of extraordinary business, which we'll discuss later. Are there any apologies? <clears throat> I don't think so. All right, Chief, can we resolve to ex item for extraordinary business? We need to move it in a second. Time. Okay. For the item for extraordinary business, it's to do with the um, representative report, which I think you should all have been given a copy. Can I have somebody move that we can move it? Thank you, yeah. Mr. Senator. No, no, thank you very much. Mipip's fine. Sorry? Mipip's fine. Mipip's fine, yeah, right. Good point. You need a watch, you're right. <laughs> so we don't have any apologies. Do we have any conflicts of interest to be declared? No. no? Do we have any tributes or acknowledgements? Yeah. Um, so uh, last week was a tough week. We actually uh, we lost um, two um, members from out of our, our community. Um, the first, Chris Hackney. Um, Chris Hackney had the, um, the post office um, as a restaurant for many years. He's he was actually around the community for many many years, and um, and. And the work that he did, um, right through not just through here, but all the way through um, Longbush as well. Um, he's he was absolutely fantastic. I wish I had more. I just um, haven't got any of the information here, um, so I do apologise for that. Um, yeah, and and so my mind's gone just completely blank. Yeah, it was. Uh, um. Oh. Jim, Jim Harper. Sorry, Jim Harper, were you going to talk about Jim or? Yeah. <clears throat> oh no. Um. Okay. So, um, Jim Harper as well. We we lost from our community. He was the um, oh, he was a Gold Star Choir officer for our volunteer fire brigade. Um, he they have the coolest house in town. It's the one with the fire pole out at the side of it. Um, that goes from the second story down to the carport. Um yeah, Jim Jim had a quiet manner. Um and so when he spoke it had all the more impact. Uh he was um a wonderful, a wonderful person and a wonderful support for our entire community. He was our milkman. Um yes. when, when I was young. Yeah, and um gosh, I'm just trying to think. He's he he's like right. he, Leaves behind his, you know, um, his beautiful wife Missy, um, Harper, um, Te Puti Puti or Papawai, um, and his beautiful children and grandchildren. Um, yeah, I, I really I could actually talk about him for a long time, so I, I'm going to stop there. Um, but I would also just uh, like to. Um, Put out a message of Totoko and Afi to um, our 
fox whānau and papawai, extended papawai whānau um, for, for the loss of um, Ben Fox as well. So, um, which the large family, um, you know, th throughout our, our, and throughout our district. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, they're still um, processing that at the moment. So all I would like to send is our um, much aroha um, and and our, our total call and support. And we're thinking of them. Kia ora. Thank you. <clears throat> so we'll move to um, public participation. Now, Chris, we have Chris here. Um, Chris, if you'd like to make a presentation, we can do that. Um, you have five minutes. Trust me, I won't take five minutes. <laughs> Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, um, I would have I've only just written this briefly at home, but my printer's not working, so I'm having to read it off my phone, but it's so ad lib. Um, so, I mean, I just um, want to say that I, I appreciate um, everything that the Mount Bray Community Board um, does. Sometimes it must seem like quite a thankless job when you're sitting here at sort of nine o'clock on a cold winter's evening um, sometimes and everyone else is sitting at home on fire watching Netflix. <laughs> um, but contrary to what uh, has been said recently, um, I don't think a low number of people standing for community board election or for the seat, available seats is an indication that there's a lack of interest um, or that they're not required. I actually personally think that if somebody is willing to put themselves out, give up their time, especially you know, on a winter's evening, and and be be available or be not accosted, but be prepared to be whenever they're yeah. going about their daily job, the groceries, shopping, whatever they're doing, to be stopped on the street and you know prepared to do that. Um, then my you know my thanks go out to you. And I you know if if I believe that people that are putting their names forward are competent and represent my beliefs and values, why would I contest their spot on the available seats? So for that, I think all, you know, four of you, Storm, Angela, Karen, Mel, you know, thank you very much personally. And this is just a personal thank you for all the time and effort that you've put in to getting the pain farm finances back because I know when I started getting involved in this when the town hall project started and I started attending meetings and questioning things, I often hit a brick wall. And you know, if you've got you have to have that perseverance and stubbornness to just keep on going and keep asking questions. So, and I'm sure that many other members of the community feel the same. It's just they're not here tonight. They're sitting at home in front of the fire watching Netflix. So, um, that's the end of my speech. Oh, I just like to say. ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがと
Can I have somebody to move? Thank you. And somebody to second. We're receiving the report. Thank you, Angela. Okay, so now we move to the minutes. But last meeting. Minutes of the, um, of the last meeting. There again is a copy in there. Uh, now we will address two issues in this in the chair's report. But can I have something to move that we accept the meeting notes of May? Yep. Do, I need, do I need to put the correction through now? Or? Yeah. yeah. Have you got a correction? Can, yeah, just page, page 13, the resilience report. The Community Resilience Day, which is the emergency response um, practice hub day, is actually the 21st of September, not the 16th of October. So it's topic six, page 13. So the 16th of October becomes the 27th of September? 21st of September. And, and as it is, not was? It's because the one coming up. Yeah, it's the one coming up, not yeah, the one yeah. like last year. Yeah. 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 Now, other than that, do we have any other issues with the meeting notes? Can we get a mover for that? Yeah, just a step. So can we, can we call that as being read now and passed? Thank you very much. Hi. You're right. Was that a yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We need to vote on those two. Uh, yes, we need them. All in favour. All in favour. Right. And the will do may, may, may I just ask really quickly with regards to, I'm not sure what the action items are for. Anyone reading this isn't going to understand what, what it means. Um, like mm. 497 update, 731 update, yeah. 501 action. Mm. This isn't making any sense, like, as a, um, to, to just have it like that. It's, it's, um, so do you want the whole item, action item in that section as well? Follow that somewhere. So it's, in the, it's in the agenda already. Yeah, yeah, no, this is from the previous minutes. Yeah. So, yeah. so in the minutes, it just says, but, Action, like people will then have to go and get the previous agenda, go through that to get what this action item report is to then understand what this is referring to. But is the action item report not attached to, the, to this agenda for this particular? To the agenda, yeah. but not the minutes. This is the action item for here. Yeah, and then there'll be a notation under for that action item. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I I don't know if it needs all this. That's all. I, I haven't seen this before in any way, shape or form where this has actually been put out like this and it is a little bit confusing. I would suggest that they're notes that should be um, recorded. And then on the next... Then commit back to action item. So it should just be the, the resolution. Yeah. The yeah, so that should be in the next um, action um, item list. And um, Farikaka is Fari, not Fara. On two o five. Do you want to um, move that they be removed from this set of minutes before they go out? Is, is that possible? I just think that that's the a bit minutes. confusing. Yeah, amend, you can amend the minutes. Yeah. I, I just wanted to check with everybody else that they're happy with that because I, I just think it's a bit confusing like that. And it's better to probably remove that. Understand. Yeah. Does it correct them? I'll just ask some questions. I had no issue with what it was doing and where we're going to, but it's not a great issue, brother. So was this seen updated accordingly? Yes, so that's yeah. the newest one. Okay, so and we actually has all of that. Right, so we don't no. need that. Okay. I don't, I don't really need oh, that. Okay, that makes sense. Is that what we're saying? We're going to yeah. Okay. That. Okay. So it's just like um, normally we have to decide when we receive it. So exactly there that we resolve to receive the action item report. The rest of it goes. So, yeah. so for action item on this one, 9.5, we're going to ask to have it removed. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I can keep the action items report. Received and received, and who moved it and stuff, and that that the action item report for that agenda was received, but doesn't need all this four nine seven seven three one. It's a bit confusing. Well, as long as it's updated here. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. right. All, all, so all of that just goes on to the actual next action <coughs> item list. Yeah. Are we are we clear what we're doing then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just put a line through that for mine, and this be to be doing Okay. Yep. So we then move to the chair's report. Now, I was expecting an updated chair's report. We had an item one, which was the same part, which was a constant in our agenda, chair's report, but I haven't seen that yet. And topic one was always going to be paying farm. <laughs> Um, through um, Mr. Chair, yeah, we'll make sure that that stays number one. Uh, okay. This time round, uh, we just left it as it was, but we'll put it. Okay. 
So in case of that, do we discuss anything that comes at Payne Farm or not? Or do we leave it to the 9.5 item that comes later? But there is one coming up with regards to Payne Farm, so we are getting an update this evening. Okay, so we'll move past Payne. Do, do you want to move it forward? To go with the Chair's report, which would be... No, well, I'm just, just just to make sure that in future there will always be a topic one paying for yep. and it'll be an open topic. Okay. Okay. Oops. So oh. sorry. That was me. Sorry. sorry. That that was actually um that that's my report that's at the back of of the agenda papers. This um, is... isn't that what that's in regard to? I I thought that that was actually about. Now that, that, that's item two. Yeah, the report that I gave about yeah, paying fund. No, that's a, that's item two. Yeah, that's topic it. two. Item or topic one was always just paying farm. Oh. It came into the discussion about paying farm because it's an ongoing. So okay. may, may I then um, perhaps perhaps suggest that rather than it be on the chairperson's report that there is just a report on paying farm, which is always gone. Yeah. The so then we should move what we've got for the paying farm each time rather than it be a separate thing, if that's where it's going to land in the in the community board no, papers. No, because I'm leaving paying farm there because what it says is it should be part of this. We have a discussion about paying farm and a topic comes up then we can discuss it as we did with Chris. So I'm just leaving it that the, the item that is further down is a specific item on the finances of Payne Farm. So that's a set of this item. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, so in terms of um, topic two, um, this appears as item 10.1 as well. So it's Mel's report, um, which wasn't tabled previously, but it has now been tabled, so there's no need to discuss. You happy with that? Uh, it's, it's it's the direct verbatim copy of the report I gave last um, yes. yep. meeting. Yeah, so it's a formal copy. So that's in 10.1. Yep. So we don't need to discuss any further, or is there any further discussion report? Yeah, um, just, can we just check the spelling on this? So farms, F-A-R-M, <laughs> and, um, and, and it's a descriptive term, not descriptive. Oh, it's just things like, I mean, it's, please, please, can we just get this? Yeah. Oh. Um, sorry, yes. can I just also, can can we, um, it's, it's as well, when we're referring to it, it's the pain estate. So it's not just the pain Pain's farm, on. it's the pain estate, which is the combination of all. Yeah, assets. that's the point, the point. It's not continuing. Is is that okay? Can we can we have that so it's the Payne Estate public meeting submission, not Payne Farm? Because well, the it's for the whole. Describe it's 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 that it's crucial? Oh. I mean, most people. Aren't. I was going to say we understand. Well, that's because the Payne Farm is part of the Payne Estate. I understand that, yeah. but you know, we're not we're not high court lawyers. I think people understand the reference. That's my opinion. Mm. In, in, future, in future, we'll just refer to it as. Do you want to refer to Payne Farm or Payne Farm Estate? Pain estate. Pain estate. Because is, is everybody happy with that sort of adjustment? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't yep, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. So we'll just, you just make a notation there. We'll change it to pain estate. Thank okay, you. so any further discussion on that? No. no. Okay, so the next item, topic three, is the Memorial Pedestrian Screen. And this is similar to um, Mel's, but we are withdrawing uh, Karen's Karen. Karen's paper. Karen, but we are drawing current, but you would like to make a public statement today. Yes. So I wrote a member's report on the street lighting project, which was objected to by the um, executive, and the contents I was told were inaccurate. I was not told what about my report was inaccurate, and I believe it was actually ac accurate. However, I'm prepared to withdraw that report. On the condition that the questions that I have around the new project for street lighting, which is a different project, so the original project was included 10 crossings and a process was undergone with a project manager for that. That project is basic and I'm willing to withdraw my report on it, as I say, on, on 
condition that my questions on this new project are answered. A report has been withdrawn. So it's been withdrawn. Okay. That's fine. I may table it later. I reserve the no, ability to do that. Withdrawn, we've withdrawn the paper. All right. Can I speak to the street lighting project? Yeah, look, I thought you were going to make a statement to that because we have worked out a process with the executive. All right. It's been pointed out to me that there's a very basic distinction in our roles here and that community board uh, governance and it needs to be kept completely separate to operations. But I disagree on this particular point because my concern about this tender process for the street lighting is regarding the compliance of the, of the procurement process for this work. And I believe that the compliance of procurement is a governance matter. I don't intend to insert myself into the operation of this work. I won't be counting the number of cones on the street or the depth of the trenches for the electrical wiring, but I feel I have an obligation, or we have an obligation to the ratepayers to ascertain whether their money is being spent by our executive according to the procurement process. The ratepayers are being asked for more and more money and people ask me quite regularly, or oh, Karen, those guys down there, do they know what they're doing? Are they looking after things carefully? To be honest, I have to say, I don't really know. I'm not particularly assured. Okay, so we now have <laughs> we now have a process by which we were told that uh, the work was put up for tender. It's now 16, lights on 16 crossings, I believe. That three, I was, we were told last meeting that three tenders were produced, three tenders were accepted, and then one the contract has been awarded to one of those tenderers. I've got on quite a few questions around that. Paul has said that if I ask him those questions, he will answer them. One of my fundamental questions, obviously, is what is the contract sum? The contract has just been awarded, and why should not the contract sum be made available? It's not a secret. This is public money. Anyway, that will be one of my questions. In the meantime, we're told that this work will start this month, which is fantastic because, as we know, some of this, these crossings we consider to be dangerous. So that's really good news. And we're told, we're sure on Monday that we would have a project for the work, project timeline, fantastic. But I do have some other questions around the tender process. As I say, it's all to do with whether I'm convinced that it was it followed a compliant process. So we've got the ratepayers' money, which we're concerned about particularly, but then Fwaka Katahi, NZTA are involved as well, they're going to subsidise that work. It's all public money. It's the same process. Any work over $100,000, I believe there should be three prices appeared for that work. Anyway, I have a list of questions I'm going to put into Paul, he's assured me that he will answer one. That's and that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Any questions arising from that? No, not if she's going to go to Paul and actually get the answers to the questions that we can't answer. That, that, that's, that's, that's the agreement we had with Paul yeah. through a meeting we had through the week that uh, Paul has agreed to accept any questions we have yeah, directly to him. And that's, and that's, that's a great way to do it, working alongside the council. I think it's a good good outcome all round, so we'll go through with that. So, Karen, if you prepare your questions and send them to Paul. Mm. Okay, so moving on. Topic four is the ward okay. councillors. Sorry, have we not moved on? Moved on? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Aidan, are you doing that today? Yep, I'll uh, flip through so I didn't prepare anything for the agenda, but just nutted some points out um, in the last couple of hours. Sorry? Mm -hmm. I nutted some points out to speak to in the last oh, couple of hours. Oh, right, okay. I thought so you I didn't, agenda. Yeah, right. I didn't have time to prepare anything for the agenda. Okay, um, Look, and to, to be fair to those, um, I think if we take notes from what you might add to us, mm. we can put them into the agenda. I'm happy for you to take, speak in an open fashion on projects and things that are of interest we'll put into the agenda and into the notes from the meeting. Right. Um, so just to kick off, um, uh, I know the Marlborough Community Board attends a lot of the council meetings and workshops. However, um, a couple of weeks ago, we went through and uh, we part successfully passed our Enhanced Annual Plan um, for this year. 
and uh, and during that process, the council staff, we were told by uh, our CE Janice that council staff had identified over 500k in savings, which is, uh, I think, great news. And that was something that, as a community board member or as a councillor, I have never heard that come from our staff in the past. Yeah. Um, and as a result of those savings that were identified, our rates increase, uh, forecast rates increase was reduced. But also the other benefit was that three projects across the district were able to be brought forward and, 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 um, and accelerated rather than uh, being carried out in years to come. And one of those, two of those projects directly relate to Martinborough. One is the wastewater treatment capacity study. Um, the other project is other projects are flood planning for Martinborough, Featherston and Gratian. It's also a project to occur at the Gratian wastewater treatment uh, which is riparian planting, which is a resource consent requirement uh, for that plant. Um, so during the uh, enhanced annual plan, you would have noted that while there was lots of discussion about um, water and um, uh, yeah, our, our water allocations and uh, how much to spend on our uh, water infrastructure, um, there was no discussion around the roading matters and, uh, and how much to invest in our roading networks. And that was because um, our council staff over the years had heard the feedback that uh, community board, or sorry, community members, the community boards and uh, other elected members had provided to council staff. And so the council staff had felt or understood and realised that the community was wanting further inv an increased investment in the roading network. So last year, staff had completed the three-year uh, tra land transport plan and budget, which had been submitted to NZTA for approval. So that plan and budget uh, proposes that for the coming financial year and for the next two financial years, there'll be significant increases in spending on our investment in our roading networks. So instead of the four, approximately $4 million that was spent in 2023-24, There'll be something like proposed to be approximately nine million spent in 24 25 on our roading networks across the district. Now, can I just ask a question? Is, is this again, is this for new projects or maintenance projects, or is it all wrapped up into one? I think it's all um, across the board for, for uh, roading, mate, roading, repairs, maintenance, and projects. Okay. Uh, through the chair, it's predominantly around maintenance and renewals. Uh, we haven't yet had any feedback from NZTA around what they call the low cost, low risk, which is where the new projects sit. Um, and we still haven't had formal notification that the maintenance and renewals is locked yet. Okay. They're still making that decision. All right. Sorry. Thank you. Carry on. Um, so those increases were built into the calculations for the enhanced annual plan, which is why there wasn't any consultation or discussion about uh, the roading budget within um, than the consultation document. And those increases were calculated into the proposed rates increase, uh, which was approved by councillors two weeks ago. Um, so also in that roading space, last month, the government announced that they are increasing funding across the country for state highways and local roads. Potholes. And, yeah, there was the pothole conversation. When I think it was more than just potholes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um so I think, and and the read that I got out of that, and and on my and hopefully on correct, Janice, was that there was from one specific fund, South Warren District Council has received an increase of one hundred and eight percent. It's good. And in another, in a, in a second fund, we will receive an increase of eighty six percent. And then there's also increases for uh, the sort of Purpose Road uh, out at uh, Cape Palliser. Is, Which is through the chair. Is is there a, um, a sum attributed to those percentages? Because a percentage of a very small amount is a, is not very much, is it? So what? No, I haven't seen. Oh, I haven't okay. seen any sums. I think okay. on the information that came out from they substantial amounts of money. Oh. We don't know. I, I, sorry, I haven't seen no, Like I say, we're still working with NZTA on what those numbers look like, so we're working with very limited data at the moment. Yeah. It's very positive that they're increasing, yes. which is good. Well, it's great. Mm. 
Um, I think it's that's a great the extension of the special purpose road for Cape Palliser for another three years is really good. Yeah, that's great. Brilliant. Um, so that's uh, those issues. Um, I just quickly want to come to the representation uh, review. Um, and over the last month, an informal survey was carried out by council using um, using Survey Monkey. Uh, a small number of uh, people uh, responded and provided responses to uh, council staff. However, out of that, it was interesting that there were a large number of responses came from the Martin Borough Ward, but there were also uh, responses came from community board members um, across the district as well. Um, and and a large number of responses indicated that community, they wanted community boards to remain. So last week at our um, SWC meeting, we received a paper um, about uh, which provided three options. Now, I suppose that's going to come. It's coming up. And, and, and the point I just want to make is that while two of those options, there is a comment there or sentence there, consult on new community boards. Nice. I don't believe that that means to get rid of community boards like some of the commentary in the newspapers or some of the commentary on social media has been. Um, I'm that this council consults and listens to the feedback from our community. It's not like NZTA or Waka Katahi who, who consult and openly state that they will not consider the submissions that are received. So, I have the confidence that our councillors will listen to the feedback from our communities regarding community boards and making their decision around the representation for the district in 2025 and 2028. Jay, are you suggesting that the impression that we've got from some of the press and some of the articles and, for example, the Star uh, are not reflective of the thoughts of the councillors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every councillor has their own thoughts and their own opinions I understand that. about but i'm sure that um and i'm confident that uh the, the collective group of councillors around the governance table will take on board the feedback that they receive from the community not only on community boards but um but the uh, the level of representation and ward councillors and councillors at large etc so i'm confident that um, the, the, the governance table of councillors will take on the feedback from everyone who submits and and, and use that information in their uh, decision making process. Sorry, through you, um, through you, Storm, um, Mr. Chair. I um I just had a, a quick question though because in the paperwork for that, um, where the survey um shows the numbers of people that went through, the current request appears to be to put start looking at moving forward without the community boards, despite receiving Survey Monkey reviews. Now, I, I, I understand that five of them or something were community board members, but we're talking about an excess of 40 people, um, and you can deduct five from that and still get some large numbers. And I'm just... Uh, in comparison to what everyone was talking about, that people want these. They're not just people from Martinborough saying they want these, but that's people, I, I mean, I'm guessing we don't know, but on the Survey Monkey, who are saying that they want their community board. So why is the, that's certainly the way the newspaper and things read, was that council, well, the Strategic Working Committee were approving to move forward with a request for the option that actually um, doesn't include community boards. Sorry, have I made sense? So, uh, well, I understand the question you're asking, but who you're asking? Well, I'm asking Aidan, because this is his, um, okay. uh, this is his report, but I'm, I'm I, and I 
com completely understand and agree that people are individuals and when they represent the individual and not the co collective, they shouldn't use a collective voice. But, um, you know, when you've got 74.47% saying, yes, they do want community boards, um, why would any recommendation to, to, to consult with, to go out and consult with, not include your community boards? So, so Mel, I was just, um, I, I suppose I was just raising my concern that I, I, and, and I felt that um, the discussion and the way it had uh, gone has been, has, has, has gone off track and that the commentary has come about saying that the council wants to get rid of community boards. I, that it could have been, it, it could also be, um, does, does, the, does the community uh, want to have community boards or not have community boards? And that's the way that I'm viewing it because people are going to be given the opportunity to provide feedback and, uh, and, and, and let the council know. Uh, what their views are, but but that survey, that initial survey monkey was just um, it was a snapshot. It was just a small piece of work which council staff used to um, to generate and start the conversation. Uh, information to be put towards the councillors around the table, uh, and then to make uh, the decision to then go out to uh, the community and submit. Um, and while and and I and I even asked the question around the pod as to why we don't provide three options uh, to consult on to the community, like we provide multiple options when we do our uh, EAP or our long term plan and that and that sort of thing. So I've asked those questions, but I'm sure that once we work through the process, we will get the feedback from our communities, whether it's Manabra, Fetus, and Greytown. Um, and we will receive that information. And when it comes back to the table, we will be making our decisions on the basis of what we receive. Just... So, sorry, 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 just to um, screw you, um, um, Storm. I, I just, um, Aidan, so, so is there a capacity if, like, are, are they even looking at the potential that if the towns, Sorry, Featherston and Greytown don't want community boards, or or however that might fall. That we would continue with the Martinborough community board. Like, is there um, anything going through saying that we could have that? Considering that the main estate my, is meant to sit with Mel, from my, Mel. From my perspective, we haven't had those discussions. We're this is only the starting process of of this journey. Um, I know Janice just had her hand up. Yep. I have my answers. Through the chair, I, I just need to, to make it clear that what we're putting out or, or what we're asking council to prepare is their preferred option for consultation. That then goes through a process of hearings. And part of that process requires the members at the table to take into account the feedback they're receiving from the community and make a recommendation to the local government commissioner about how representation will look going forward. The local government commissioner then makes the decision. So it is down, it's a different process to the process that you're used to following for budgets and those kind of things. So you're only allowed to have one option. You're not allowed to have multiple options. You're only allowed to consult on one option with the community, gather feedback, listen to that feedback, prepare a recommendation to go through to the local government commissioner, and then they come back with a decision next year when they've taken on board everything that's been heard around the table, all of the feedback, they get all of the submissions, and then they either say, yep, we agree with your uh, preferred option, or they change it. And there have been recent cases where the commissioner has changed the, the preferred option of the council. So um, I just want to make it clear that this isn't a normal process, and that all of council is doing is make a recommendation to the commissioner. They then make the call. Is, May I just... I just Sorry. Sorry. Is, is the decision that gets made, is that going to apply you know, universally across community boards? We, we it... haven't reached that point yet. That's what I'm That's saying. Going to get to a point. We don't know. Until we get the feedback, um, council can't preempt any decision at the moment. We're, we're going to 
they've worked around the table, they've they've come through and said they want to prepare the, the document to go on a certain option. That's what Robin is working on. That will go for adoption on the 31st. Consultation will then happen. And then when the feedback comes from that, that's when we get back around the table to decide what levers or changes need to be made to the proposal before it goes through. Yeah, so, so but what I'm asking is, is, is the decision of just this region or is it the decision for throughout New Zealand? So you you are looking for South Wairarapa representation just, with just you. That, so that's just, it's just that's, that's, thank you. That's all I Sorry. No, no, I'm I'm just wondering. Um, um, it says here. I think it's because option A, the change, says that part of that change will be consulting on no community boards. Is there a reason why we went that track? Because I wasn't at the meeting, so just to clarify. To the chair, the decision to, to rather than having consult on. on. So the decision at the meeting was to be. Uh, let's us let, let's put the proposal forward that we don't and and see what feedback comes back from the community. Uh, well, it, it's either it could have been either way. You either going to put the proposal to have community boards and see what feedback you got from maybe the part of the community that doesn't support them, or the other way. So it, it's fifty fifty either way. And the decision around the table was to go forward with the option with no community boards and seek feedback from the community about how they feel about community boards. So, so there will be additional questions asking how people feel and if they would like to see community yeah. boards or not see community boards. I just, I always worry that if there's a, the only question is no community boards. That is the proposal. So if the community want community boards, they need to feedback that, that information to... And it, and it won't get lost that this is actually because it's not going to get lost in the fact that if they want community boards, but they, so, so, so... They disagree with the consult on no community boards, but they agree with the with the rest of it for how the council split would be. No, there's individual questions. So they are individual but questions. It's just really important, yeah, I yeah. think, for, for everybody around the table to actually know. So we wandered into a part that we hadn't actually addressed. It was a special item we had for the report. Now we're but that's what they were um, talking about. That's what they were talking about. When we get to we'll the, get into this. Um, through the chair, I'm, I'm just happy to answer that question. Yes. So my team's putting together the consultation document. Introduce yourself. Oh, um, Rob Thomas, uh, Relationships Manager. Um, my team does the governance, so Robin's in the team. Um, we do um, policy, which fits under that, which is the representation review, communications and community development. So those are my the teams that I'm uh, managing. Um, just in regards to that question, uh, my team is pulling together the consultation documents. It will go to council, uh, which council then needs to adopt. And within that will be background information. Um, so information about um, uh, community boards, members at war, um, local representation, a whole, a whole lot of information. Um, the three primary things, which we'll talk, probably talk about on the item, is that the councillors asking about should there be representation uh, across the entire district, of which uh, there would be two, two representatives on that. Uh, the second one is um, around setting up an advisory uh, group, a rural advisory group. And then the third one would be the community boards. And so we would expect to get feedback on all three. Um, talking to the team uh, this week, uh, we talked about making sure that we would capture um, uh, where the people are providing the survey feedback from. So we would be able to then split up and say that the people for, who are from the Martinborough uh, ward have said this about community boards. So that would give us a more informed information about support for or against within that area. Um, so, yeah, we'd be able to split the information up to, to see you know, where the support is or not for community boards in that process. I might just also add that um, part of our representation review, we are legally obliged to ask the community about community boards every six years. And so you could say that this is part of that process, is that we would, we would have to ask about community boards anyway. Um, and then when the item was discussed uh, at council, it's definitely worth watching the video if you haven't already watched it. There were quite a wide range of mixed views, um, everything from more empowerment to community boards to um, I'm not too sure to maybe one community board, maybe not others. So there was quite a, a ride variety. And that's what we're doing is just asking the community, what do you want to do? So um, highly likely the team will have a survey and uh, that can be shared out through uh, your Facebook page and other opportunities like that. And we'll capture that information and just present it as it is.
Excellent, Chair. Can I, so what other platforms will, are you intending to make that survey available on? This, this is a, um, this would follow a special consultative okay. process. So we'd, we'd, in other words, we would ensure that there's much broader engagement than a normal so small okay. consultation. Yeah. So the survey, um, we will be able to share that on social media platforms yeah. and you have your own Facebook page. Um, so that would be able to go onto that Facebook page and share. It's on Facebook. So you will have a link on? Absolutely. Let's through the website. Okay. Okay. Through the libraries the and libraries. through posters and flyers, the same as we did for the consultation for the AAP. Will there, will, will there be, so nothing's being sent out directly to anyone? We can't use email addresses unless we've been given permission to, so yep. no. Sorry, Sorry through, through you, um, Storm. Um, are people going to be able to go into council and complete the survey um, but paper-based? So there's a lot of people who still don't have or don't have access to computers or know how to work them. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So um, within the consultation information, uh, I'm working with the team to make sure there'll be a simple survey in there that, and be made available in the council's, uh, usually in the library, uh, at the main um, centres, uh, as well, the drop-in centres of council, and there'll be boxes there and people can fill them out and put them into the boxes. Uh, we'll collate all that information. There's quite a lot of analysis that'll need to be done as part of that process. Okay. I'll just carry on, Storm, because we've got to respond. Yes, yes. Um, then my, last, my last thing that I was wanting to raise was um, earlier this week, there was the media article um, about the uh, Warwick Automobile Association submitting to the Regional Land Transport uh, Committee about the Waihinga State 53 bridge, and that, that should be prioritised for replacement. And currently, that bridge is not within, not in the top 30 projects in priority for the whole Wellington region. Now, I've spoken to the uh, our council's rep on that committee, and um, and the projects within the Wairapa region that are within that top 30 list are the Rimataka Hill Road and two uh, heavy motor vehicle way bridges um, up in North Wairapa, not the Waihinga Bridge. So currently that committee are reviewing the priority list and, and what they're going through at the moment, they're in the halfway period, halfway point of a six-year regional uh, land transport plan. So that started at 2021 and finishes at 2027. And at their next meeting in mid-August, um, our representative has said that he would like to have as much information as possible on the risks and the effects of the closure of the Waihinga Bridge to the Martinborough community and businesses. So I know that's a short time frame, but I'm just wondering as to whether there could be a bit of work and, and a bit of collaboration between Martinborough Community Board and councillors to pull a whole lot of information together so that uh, that information can then be presented at that um, at that meeting in uh, August to start that process and escalate um, to work towards prioritising the replacement of that Waihinga Bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Yeah. Yes. August this year. August this year. Um, so, yeah, sorry, just to clarify that, this is a NZTA committee that's meeting. No, it's the regional it's land, land transport. Land transport. So it's a it's it's the Wellington region, which includes the Wairapa. And there are, from what I understand, there are a whole range of projects that every council and the regional council have. Um, and is NTTA involved on in that? So through the chair, the, the way it works is you have your um, local asset management plans and your local plans and they feed into the regional land transport plan and that feeds into the national land transport plan so it's a hierarchical move so if you've got big projects and things like that that you want to get in there you have to get them through the RLTP gate to get them into the higher process so that secures the funding and it puts them on the radar for the funding through the through that through the process that we've been talking around with NZTA right. and we're putting bids in for money if you've already flagged those things, then you stand more chance of getting your business case through than if you haven't. So I, sorry. a couple of years ago, Mel was aware that um, our previous mayor met with um, the local MP and the Minister of Transport at the Waihinga Bridge to discuss the replacement of the bridge. Yeah. And 
and and and our previous mayor believed that the existing business case that was already in place for the replacement of the bridge should just be represented. However, the minister uh, said that a new business case would be needed to be prepared and submitted to NZTA prior to the next funding round of 2027. And so it's a template for such a yeah. thing, because we could just update it. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We could. Add well, I think I'll, I'll just I'll, can I just go through and finish off. Um, so, um, so the minister said that the three points uh, that NZTA would use to rank and prioritise roading projects are safety issues, resilience, and the growth of an area. So, um, so taking that on board and. I know it will be, you know, it's be no doubt be a huge amount of work, but taking that on board, Mel and I spoke to um, the business association and we did some work to draft a survey with the idea being that as and when the bridge closes over winter, and sometimes it is multiple times a year, last year it didn't close at all. But once the bridge closes, the survey could be pushed out to all the businesses in Martinborough to see what the economic cost has been to those businesses and to the community on the closure of uh, that bridge. And um, I've had a brief chat with Janice and she is happy for that to be loaded onto the council website so that it can then be pushed out um, to our community. Council staff won't have the uh, ability to uh, collate and, and monitor and, and manage that information that comes back in. So that perhaps a be a project for community boarding councillors to work. Um, but I think that's a that's a start because the more information we gather and then we collate, I think we're going to have be able to build a bigger picture going forward to 2027 when that next proposed next funding round starts. Look, we're, we're, sorry, I, I, we've already been talking about what we can do uh, in, con in conjunction with the council about putting something forward for that bridge. The thing I, I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this, but the question I have: you talked about the option being the bridge or two way bridge stations. No, no, no. Is that that to me would be a no, no, cross variation of some? No, no. no I think it's just that that they're different. No, different, no, they're different. No, they're different. No, 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 no. What you were saying was at the moment the only things that are prioritised on that list within the wider upper is the hill. The whole road, and then two way bridges, which have what so nothing within the south wide no, no, is on there. I understand. So, that, but uh, I'm, yeah, by talking about the, the the two way bridges, which should be of a huge economic cost, that's I not... just struggle to see how they could get into that. that I've got no idea, and that's, that's yeah. and 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 our councillor, who's representative on that committee, is shaking his head as well. Yeah, obviously that happened before, yeah, you know, at some stage in the past. Mm. Um, could I suggest through the chair that there's a fourth one that you might want to put in there, which is economic impact? Yeah. I think that's what we're saying. saying one, isn't it? We've got safety, resilience and growth. You need economic yeah. impact as well. Yeah. Um, even though it's not one of the, the criteria, it would be good to have that in there as well. So, And that kind of falls under resilience. Any suggestions going forward as to what we should do collectively? Well, I'm, I'm just... Um, uh, over the next few days, I'm, I'm keen to... Uh, nut out some ideas and I can circulate them amongst the community board on, on what sort of information we might be able to pull together in the short time frame to then get um, into that next meeting in August just to help mm. our, our council representative on that committee mm. start the conversation with the others. Did you say you've already done some work with the Business Association or was that something? That was prior with Mel. That was uh, in the last triennium. Oh, so draft so so we could well, it's, I, I, I think it should just be ready to go, and um, that's a bit of work that's already been carried out, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was my councillor's uh, report and submission. Apologies for being long and drawn out. <laughs> no, but, um, for Thank you, Jaden. Is there a way? Is there a way? Um, as you've already done that work with with Mel, are you able just to perhaps work with Mel? In first instance, just to check check on what the information you've got, whether or not it's still kind of like like fits within these areas, especially now we've added economic impact, and then and then we can at least have that on that accessible to anyone, you know, like any businesses and things. I think initially there's the short term yeah. thing to, for, to yeah. be ready for next month, yeah. and then there'll be the long term work. Yeah. To go to. yeah, I mean through you, Chair, we've we've got 
Business Association Wairapa Chamber of Commerce, which is the quick throughout yeah. their, throughout their members. Yes. Destination Wairapa, every mass member of business affected by it. Yeah. It's really quick ways to get to everybody without it going on actually on a website, really, because that would hit quite a big yes. percentage, wouldn't it? And it's instant. Okay, so thank you for that. Appreciate the report. Yeah. I think it's something that, you know, collectively MC being Martin Road Councillors can work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to put any writing to that? Well, I know you've taken notes. Is that going to be no. I can just send this email through. Email, email that through to Robin. But just send it through to Robin. Yeah. Yeah, thanks very much. Let me go to make a straight take that. Okay. Appreciate yeah. that. It was very good. Very good. Oh. Um, yeah. Hi, Mel. Hi. Sorry. I would just did want to say that, um, um, yeah, Aidan, if you want to um, catch up and, and you know, get our thoughts around around where we're at and things um, yep. now, then th that would be really great. Sweet. Great. Awesome. Right, so okay. just, be Come tell me. just before we move on, I forgot to ask to receive the report. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll move that. And second. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks to <laughs> front, but never mind, not there. <laughs> okay. Sorry? All in favour. All in favour, sorry. Oh, sorry. Aye. All right, so now we're going to move... The Chief Executive and Staff Income Expense Report. Mm -hmm. Can I also now ask you to move the microphone? Can we have somebody to move that we need? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, the report is there. And Janice, would you like to talk to this? Or, no, take it as read, please. Take it as read. So we don't. Anybody have any questions about the report? So, I, I just have one, one thing I had to look at. question, maybe to, to look at. Um, in the expenses, can we do something to change the the impression given of the members' sales? We had this discussion. Yeah, we had this discussion already. Yeah. I thought that was for the not moment. truly reflected. If if there is an additional component in there, can we just add the additional component? If that's what it is. Because well, this doesn't represent the collective salaries funds. paid to the members. No. It's a monetary investment. I've been getting that. No, but it's not. It's well, I don't think the, anything's happened. The, the that's in the it's budget. Spent. It's not in the spend. It's in spend. Yeah. So, claim some. Come on. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the question is. My question? Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure why the 31 isn't making sense with the 35. Sorry. What? Well, yeah, the collective salaries of salary. three thousand, three thousand, three thousand plus six doesn't add up to thirty-five thousand dollars. Or is, is, is it? are you having contributions right. coming in from those? No, no. So okay. that we just we just the, the numbers don't add up from our point of view. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wasn't sure what you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what we're doing. So, so we do understand that perhaps it's taking in some else, but I'd just like to see those separated. If we could. Yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah. If, yeah, they're not salaries. That was, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's we changed to one of our aims as well. Yeah, and the other the reason for that, Janice, is that some people have questioned how much we get paid, but then what we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's been some real narrative lately about um how how much we all earn. Yes. All yes. in it. Just but actually, I would like that um, the the truth or cost per uh, resident. Four dollars sixty-two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four dollars sixty-two, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. so cost per resident. That's um, yeah. That, that seems like it's been blown out of proportion in the narrative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is that is that a form of a question or a request? Yeah. It was a statement. Sorry, Storm. Okay. So through the chair, so we have, sorry, we have requested that member salaries is broken down to overheads and salaries and not one lump sum. Is, is that is that what we're going to ask? Yeah. If, 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 if the salaries, if the salaries can actually be the salaries, together, then sorry. If the salaries can collectively put together, and if there's additional stuff, can we call it? Have we separated out because it will be the support cost. Yeah, well, well, what it is, that's what we're going to Yes, all right. Like okay, okay. Yes. So, yes. through the chair, the only other question I had was the September event, 27th of July, 23, committed funds, September event, $150, remaining commitment, $150. I'm just wondering if that was from last year's um, resilience event that we had our open day, in which case it's either um, at the time, the Mountain community market funded some of the, the 
the refreshments for us. Fimo did that too. So I can't remember if I submitted something as a, a cost at that as well, but yeah. but it's all still sitting there. I don't, I, can we just pop it back in the funds because we obviously yeah. don't need it to be sitting. It been taken. If it's not been taken, we don't need it now because we've already got the um, $300, which is for the resilience meetings and workshops this year. We need a resolution to return that to the poll. Yeah, okay, so it had been done last year, but yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I'll move that. It gets done now. Yeah. Okay. Can we have a second for that? No. Yeah. Okay. And can we have a vote? Yes. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Did it work? Yes. I'm not sure about what's on that. Right. Moving on. Um... Not what I'm thinking. The next is the uh, financial assistance report. I was skipping that item. Right. Skipping that. Skipping that. Skipping that. Financial assistance report. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is the old set. Well, it's yeah. Action items report. The, uh, report. Yeah, that's what we've just gone through. So we're starting to let the money from the chair for. Yep. It's gone there. Yeah. Now it comes to. 9.2 the financial assistant. Yeah, they're not doing it. Yeah, we're not doing this. Oh, right. I see. Okay, right. Thank you. You're right. Okay, take it out. Um, so we don't hear. So, so, yes, right. We don't have to do those. Right. Okay, so. That's the Moving to the action item. Now, this is the part that was confusing in the other report. So, this uh, should be read with the table. So, can I have somebody move that we accept the action item report? I'll move that. Do you second it? You get a second it? Yes, behind you. Okay. No. Oh, sorry, about big fun. Okay, so do you want to go through and review those? Yes, no. I think we can see what's uh, been actioned. I think there's a fair chunk of them that have been actioned. Been actioned and resolved, which is great. Item 150 through you, Chair. Item 150, um, reporting back on updated quote for the flags at the next meeting. We have an updated quote, $88 plus GST pair flag. That was the agreement was we'd replace eight Christmas flags in time for this year. Okay. So we probably need to um, put that through as a committed fund if we're going to do that. Okay, we need a greater resolution to accept it. So this is for the full replacement eight. It's eight flags. Eight flags. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's what's the value? The eighty-eight plus GST. Each. Yeah. And we need four. Eight. Eight flags. Okay. So does Robin have a copy of that? No, I printed it off. I can pass it around if you want, right. or I can send it electronically. So we just need to make a resolution to pass that. And make a resolution that we are. Uh, okay. Everybody in favour? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Seconder. 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 Mel. 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 Yeah. Can you pass that to that? Yeah. Is there anything else that I uh, want to go through, the one after that? Carried. Sorry, if I could just say, can we can we get that to come from the community development fund or or the um? Do, have they changed the beautification fund? No. Yeah. yeah, it's all been on together, hasn't it? It's all but now it's the community yeah. that one development fund. fund. Community development fund. Yeah. So okay. is this this would come out of last year's funding, though, wouldn't it? Or take it out of this no, no, no. We're just the the resolution to for the eight flags. Yeah. Now. Yeah, it wasn't. So it wasn't, we said that we'd yeah. like them paid for, but we didn't say we're from. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So going yeah. forward, it's just a question. The the funding that we had two streams is now just one stream. Is that right? Two streams. Oh. I'm Nikki. Is the last you just get written out. Yeah, it's presented differently. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to be because I think we don't have to define define where it's coming from. If there's only one stream. Mm. Yeah, or the pain is different. Okay, so now item 153. This, this, it's still open, but I think, mm -hmm. Rob, it's something I raised with you when I made a report that we were being, 
we were, out, we were promised to get these reports that go to council and it's on the wastewater and it's still open. I thought it was agreed. I think Stephen was here when we asked the question. Yeah. Through the chair, we haven't had any reports to council on the Martinville wastewater, so okay, well, that's you're not we're missing putting. anything. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's still still running. Yeah. If we get it, we'll bring it. <laughs> yeah, you'll get them. Okay. So, was the state of planning for that project? We're waiting for the survey for the potential growth of the town or something? No, so that was what part of what Aidan had spoken to about the wastewater treatment capacity study. Is capacity. that right? That had been funded. That's been funded from the savings out of the. Enhancing your plan. And that's the there is that talks about how much the town could borrow. Is that the one? Uh, study. No. This is the capacity modelling for the capacity treatment. Modelling. Mm. The capacity of how much. So it is linked to how much the town may grow in the future and what capacity we will. Yes, but we know it can't grow at all at the moment because there's no way to look a chicken and egg thing. That's that? why we've got to do the capacity modelling because we can't work yes. on the expansion till we know what we're expanding. Yeah, what we're expanding mm. to. Okay. Well, that's it. Sorry, sorry. Just um, through your storm. That's exactly um what I was going to say. Is once until they actually do the sludge removal, um, and de-sludge the ponds to sh even identify what capacity that creates. Um, yeah, it's it's all just quite a bit of guesswork at the moment until they get rid of that. It all gets de-sludged. Probably they know how big the ponds are. <laughs> Without the there, there, there's been. Oh, I mean, dear. I think well, they won't get it all. And un, under the um, resource consent requirements and the notices that uh, GW have provided to council um, about the breaches, um, council is constantly working and providing information back to GW and in and, and GW um, the, as the regulator is constantly um, on top. In, in keeping an eye on what is happening and the information that, and, and the relationship that council has with GW, providing the information that they require is, from what I understand, a, a, a good relationship. So the council has been providing information um, ahead of the timelines or the timeframes that they need to submit that information to Greater Wellington. Greater Wellington takes a period of time to, to review that information and then comes back. So. There was, uh, I think, what was it referred to as this as stop notice? Um, well, different notice notices have been changed and modified, and um, and, and now there's going to be a a, a, a complete or an ad work notice to carry out that um, sludge uh, removal work. So there's just the whole process that council staff and Wellington Water are, are working on. I think with, have they started yes. taking the sludge out? They, they are get, they're getting, but they are making progress. And years. They are making progress. And, and while obviously there's a long and drawn out process to do the planning and get the approvals from Grace of Wellington, it doesn't happen overnight. But the process, progress is is occurring and, uh, and, and steps are, are being taken to get Martinborough wastewater treatment back on track. Just, just a question, I don't know if you know this at all, um, is there a target to reach a level of desludging uh, or is he going to try and desludge the whole thing? I don't I believe you can. I think you have, You can only go so far because otherwise yeah. you'll completely wreck the pond. Wreck the pond, yeah. So, so there probably needs to leave something in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So it's for the it's process to, to continue moving, going forward. Okay. I just wasn't sure if there was a target of where, where they could go. The one, the one thing out of the that's become evident in this whole process is that going forward, council needs to fund regularly the sludging yeah. of all our sewage ponds across the district, and that has never was never ever identified or forecast budget for in the past. Okay, so I guess it's now it's on the radar now. It, it is very now. much so. Can I just can I just sorry through the chair the um, item sixty nine on the action item report about that sign which has got request CEO provide feedback on the 70k sign no add to to it on the 20th of june i don't actually really understand what you're saying sorry yeah the where it says the interim speed management plan has been submitted all existing sign locations are recorded in the national speed limit register and no longer identified in the bylaws um does that mean we can do it south Africa can't no no, it means the opposite. 
just the opposite. So the um, we did submit the um, speed management plan. We did get a letter back from the minister asking us if we were sure we wanted to submit the speed management plan. Um, the problem that we've got is if we make the decision to move the sign, it's not an enforceable speed. Oh. So if you if you don't have permission under your speed management plan to have it recorded in that database to say that you've moved it, then you can't ticket anyone for going. Uh, so you have to go through the process, which is why it says what it says. So so we we can't we have a process involved to do this. Yep. Yeah. So it's not a quick tick in a box. Cool. So how far is that process? I mean, how long? We're, we're waiting for the minister to sign off on the speed management plan. So it's what back with the, it's back with the minister. Right. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right, we still have one open um, five. Sorry, through you, Storm, um, I've just got a question about um, the 283 around the place centre. We The request had been for staff to check the quotes, that they were supposed to receive the quotes prior to the work, and I realise that the work's already been done, but we never received the quote to approve you know, for, for the whole thing. So I'm. Um, that was actually what was going to be checked. I don't know if I'm making perfect sense or if um, any, Angela or anyone remembers what we yeah. were talking about. But um, yeah. uh, just at the last meeting, we were quite clear it, it wasn't about um, did council get a quote? It um, yeah, it, it was actually where's the quote uh, and, what, and what was the quote received? Because yeah. it, it just seemed to be the bang on the thousand dollars um that we'd put aside up to or or was it not so we don't know because i mean if it was for twelve hundred dollars and and we gave a thousand that's cool but if it was only you know if there if it was only for seven hundred and forty dollars yeah. then we need to know because yeah, well, through the, they uh, the reason it was raised at the time we had another member of the job as well yes they'd, right. they'd be willing to to do it a, a, a not charge full rate, cost, yeah. um, and we said that could we see the place into quote? That was that was the question raised. I mean, uh, it's in retrospect. I don't think it's now worth following up. If it's I was going to say, did this have been actioned according to the, yeah. the plan? So we're going yeah. back over time to do something that may not be necessary. Yeah, no, they've said it was actioned because they said they'd they'd seen it. That was council seen it, not us seen it. It was the request was for it to make our grant, grant. <laughs> to actually see the the quote. So we knew exactly what the grant was for. Well, Nick and I both went back and reviewed it, and it was three thousand dollars. Yeah. But can we see the quote? Because you you must have a copy of the quote. You said you'd seen it, so can we see it? Do so you want a copy of the quote? Just 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 to say we've seen it, and then we can yeah, play it. Go. So you can see the <laughs> can you see the email? Are you happy with it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We just wanted to see it. That that was the paperwork. Yeah. And, and and to identify with it, like you say, if it was twelve hundred dollars. retract anybody's private information. But we don't need to see the person's name. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other discussion on the action items? Cover that park. Yeah. Happy with that. Uh, are we ever going to do anything about the Dudwell's cut? Should we just get a thing in silence? It's Martinborough. It's back to it for now because it was like, yeah. It's Martinborough. It's Martin. Welcome. That money is still being fed. Okay, so we move to the next item. Is that right? No, the pain farm. Oh, no, pain farm. So the next item is the pain farm report. And I have uh, a mover to accept the report. No. <laughs> but now behind, put their hand up for a second. Then. I, I knew I could see that through the backward vision. <laughs> that one had hand up somewhere. So one can move and one can second. Exactly. It's just, not, just, just, just make sure it's Pip and Mel Maynard. Yep. Pip Maynard, Mel Maynard. <laughs> so we've got that. So Janice now. Let's do this. I'm, I'm taking it as read. I'm you're just, saying, so you're yeah. happy with this? Um, no, I mean, I can go through it in detail if you want, but no. um, well, I suppose no. the only thing I would say through the chair is I think that all of the items that were identified in the agreement have now been addressed. Yes. So the I, I took the extract from that agreement and put it into the report, and I think all of the things in here have now addressed those issues. Um, so I guess I'm going to speak to it, Chair. Um, 
I think the things to pick up on are around the annual budget process. So what I will do with the team is um, arrange a meeting with you guys to go through the budgets for Pain Farm before they go through the LTP process so that you've yeah. got line aside of what's in them. Um, you asked for agreed expenditure levels so that anything over a certain value came back through the board. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that that's incredibly inefficient to the operations of, of Pain Farm and the things that need to happen. If we have reviewed the budget with you and you are happy with the budget, then providing we stay within that budget and do the things we've said, I don't see the need to come back through the community board. It's if we step outside of that. So if something happens that we need to do something different or for a different value, or we need to add more money into the budget, that's what I would expect to come back to the table and discuss. There's an understanding from the board that we, had, we granted the council $5,000 budgetary you didn't need to be reported on those items. Five thousand dollars doesn't go very far in no, no, today's no, world. That's, that's individual item. So yeah, but even then, in, individually, when we're dealing with septic tank clearance and and housing issues, five thousand dollars can mm. slow things down. And I don't want to be in a position where we have health and safety issues or things at the property that need to be fixed, and I've got to wait six weeks to get approval from the MCB. So. What I'm suggesting is that as long as we are operating within the agreed budget and you've had line of sight of that budget, then we should be allowed to operate without having to come back to MCB. You will get the reports and they'll tell you what we've spent, but so long as we aren't breaching the budgets or doing anything that we haven't discussed with you, um, I don't see operationally that we would need to do that. Oh, so I think that's... Six six weeks weeks for a long so, yeah, okay, we understand. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So, so sorry. I um. So just I I agree. The, the the amount that we would normally set aside was the um forty thousand dollars or or you know at, when we discussed that at at the given time. Um, but do you mean we will still even when when things um are less than or more than five thousand dollars, we will still be receiving um a full detailed um statement of financial performance like the one that's been provided in this yes um, i've instructed see. the team to go back to giving you the transactional detail as is shown on page 37 of the agenda yeah. so that you don't just get a value you get the, the items within it so i think that's what i heard at a previous meeting that you used to get this level of detail and, mm, yeah that's right um, obviously, when it comes to the rental income, we're rolling that up at a high level because it has got personal information yeah. in it. Yep. Um, but when it comes to expenses, you will get this yeah. from now on. Yeah, that's great. Right. Yeah. Um, and the other one is around staff time. Um, I've um, allocated four hours a week of staff time towards Payne Farm, which I think is adequate to manage the things that need to be managed mm -hmm. if we find ourselves in a situation where that's not the case then we will come and talk to you about what needs to be done and agree yes. an, an, a, an extra charge if it's needed yep. 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 that sounds great okay. uh, through, you, through you storm um the other question i just had where we uh have the current pain farm leases um and then it shows uh you know farmland homestead and cottage but then it's got down the bottom there um, about count, council pays an annual fee for the transfer station of six thousand seven hundred and thirty four dollars per year. Um, do you know when that was set? How how that figure was come to? Um, whether it was agreed? Just 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 thinking of you know if it was farmland and how much you would get for the um, acreage. That is currently um, held by the transfer station. I, I guess we're just wanting to ensure that we're receiving the best um, figures for the beneficiaries. Yeah. I just have a question there before we go because the figure I've got in the report is six thousand four hundred fifty-one. Yeah, that was because I didn't amend it to this. Six seven yeah. three four six seven three four. Okay. No, yes, um, it should be six seven three four. It was amended. Um, through the chair, it was amended when we got the uh, rental valuations done last year when you went to market for the lease. So we've used exactly the same rate per hectare in there as for the um, transfer station lease as we did for the farm one. Through the chair, that means potentially the value of the um, lease for the transfer station could fall as the value of the farmland fell compared to what it, what it was expected. 
would we end up in a scenario where we could actually get less than that for the, I, I suppose basically the question is, is it fair that transfer station land is given the same value as farmland considering the um, put right to put that right for the future use of anything is completely different? And would it not be fair that the value of the transfer station increase was more in line with a percentage increase on the homestead or the cottage for rental value? Uh, through the chair, the transfer station, as far as I know, isn't a landfill. It is a transfer station. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I've yeah, got the wrong mm. terminology. So um, it shouldn't have that much of a different value to the farmland, I wouldn't have thought. Um, I mean, the values were done by a valuer. They've not been done by us. Oh, no, no, I get so, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, yeah. And, the, and you, I don't think you could stretch the... Um, the valuation for the homestead or the cottage to be equivalent to the transfer station. No. The two things are very different. So we've we've used the best information we've got to hand, which is the market value assessment for the land, and used the same rate for this as we've used for the farmland. Okay. And is, is there a potential lease coming back? Um, through the chair, not at the moment. Um, legally, I'm not sure how we can lease from ourselves because right. you yeah, have no right of dispute or uh, mediation when you're leasing from yourself. So it needs it is a formal agreement to pay. Um, and that's, that's all we're doing at the moment. One of the other questions yes. from that, sorry. Um, is, is there a contingency being built in for make good? Should the transfer station cease being a transfer station? There would have to be. And that would be at our expense. So, so the, the yeah, it's it's council's transfer station. Okay. So, yeah. So, sorry, sorry. Is that obligation in in place at the moment? I've not seen a I've not seen a written agreement. Are we even of any form? No. Um, but it would it would be you would think if there was a lease, there would be something. In, in we'll we'll tie all the loose ends up when we finally wade our way through all the legal implications we're currently working through. So we'll do it at that point. So the chair is, is this the time to talk about <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry. It's sorry, it's just the time to talk about the lease situation or is that going to be a later conversation with the lease your information you've been seeking from your legal advice about um I'm, I'm not going to talk about that i'm not in a position to give you any information no. have you got a lease at the moment we're waiting for land valuations to come back <laughs> like not just for um yeah, we've got these for lease for rental, but we've we've got some other work to do in valuation terms for the whole site. So until we get those, we can't complete the process. Can uh sorry. Oh. Through you. Yeah. Um look, I just got a question because I, I understand that the person who has the farm lease had some concerns about the fencing. And had raised it at your meeting at your at your public meeting. Is that correct? Yes, there is. And I see here that there has been Significant money spent, on, spent on, on, because that was my concern, because I know that the community board had put money aside. Now, this shows that there has been some fencing done, and so I'm just wondering whether or not I think may check, possibly it may pay to check with, our, with the, the leasee um, to, to see whether or not that has now been sorted or if there is additional you know where that sits with or not that sits with with the farm lease let's see or if it, the chair is with us if you're aware of someone who has an issue then they need to bring it to our attention mm. um i can't deal with hearsay at a meeting that we weren't no, no that's right yeah, so, yeah that's right. no 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 but that's why i just thought i'd raise just because i see here that there is work done on on the fencing so it is significant yeah. Sorry, Sorry. Through, through you, Storm. So originally there was, we were advised and approved for um, to pay a full quote for fencing to be completed of all waterways on Payne Farm. Um, and we did subsequently receive a report saying, yeah. showing some new fences and things and that it was done. However, I'm driving just to the transfer station. Um, there is a waterway that comes under the road and then back up and across towards the farm, um, sorry, towards the homestead and cottage, that's unfenced. It's a very clear waterway. It's, um, yeah, it has water in it in winter, um, but it's not fenced. And that's oh. sitting inside the leased farmland. So that was, that was. Um, 
That, Mel, that was um, something that was discussed probably a good 18 months or so ago, and and um, right. papers came to council or to community board about the requirement for waterways to be fenced yeah. off. I think, and while there was approvals, I, I'm just wondering as to whether it might be easier if perhaps we just, if, if you, we could bang it, if necessary, just bang an email through to Janice to let her know about uh, your, what you've noted, and, um, and then we might just be able to deal with it that way rather than just to and expedite the meeting tonight. Yeah. Uh, can you do that, Mel? Can you just put an yeah, sure. email to the CEO? Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Deal with that. Sorry, did we have any more discussion? I just noticed that there was lots of feedback. Again, Janice, if I can just say thank you very much for the work you did on this. I know it's a yeah, yeah. tough it's ask. So fantastic. It was a great, oh. great, great response. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. Just on a, a note, is the money in our account or <laughs> the, I'm not sure, I'm just asking, is it in our account? Really it's promised. No, it's part of, they're doing the adjustments now because they're closing the accounts down for last year. So okay. that's why it was so important to get it to this meeting so that we could tie it all up for the end of June 2024. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I just want to congratulate. Yeah, repeat, thank you. Something that's been going on for Great. years. And, so we have to yeah. uh, have a mover and a second for receiving the report. So we did that We've done that at the same time. Yeah, Mel and Mel. The main now. It was the main now. Uh, I love it. Mel and Mel. That was Mel and Mel. Sorry, I missed that. It was okay, that's all right. You're allowed to have a little sleep off any. So, look, the, the, the next item we've got is um, item 10 and 10.1, 10 10.2, which we discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. And we heard the report at the previous meeting, correct? So, yeah, so this, is the back, this is just to confirm that that's the written one. What's happened there? Yep. Uh, this the is literally to add the paperwork in. Yeah. So the next next oh, item is sorry, item. Sorry, we need to make a move in Or Yeah. It does not resolve to receive Mel's paper. We still need to. Can, can I please move to receive my paper and have it attached <laughs> to, as real yes. to the Martinborough Community Board document? Thank you. Yeah. Do we have a second? No. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, all in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So, we don't need that with Karen, but Karen is making some action myself on that one. Yep. So the next one, I think we just, as a clarification, we've got an expense report. Is that, what this is? is that that weird thing? That it's, it's, I think is it's that this, the Plan Administration? Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to know the paperwork I needed to get reimbursed. Yeah. And I would see that the members report. I think oh, this, and I said this doesn't seem to be a very good fit. Yeah. But anyway, okay, have so somebody members reported to receive this. Yeah, whatever. I'll receive it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what it is is one hundred and sixty nine dollars and eighty nine cents to be paid to. You need to spell it right. To I think it's just. Um, You've got my name. Oh, Sam. Oh, there right. Okay. So you still stop it correctly. My name. What? There's an OU in it. Yeah. Wait, it is close. Who says to MPRO? Um, make sure that What's MPRO? It can be KMPRO, if you like. KMPRO. Oh, if you want to be formal. Corrected, oh, right. okay. <laughs> you can either add a K to start of it or take the M off and substitute yeah. that. Just call. Come on. So we've got that moved and seconded. Yeah. And we need to just vote on that and going to approve that. Oh. Yep. Sorry? <laughs> yep, give me the money. Give me the money. No. <laughs> Does anybody agree with it? Yes. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. Oh, but it was Kevin Angela. Yeah. No, no. No. No, not me. No. Thank you. Okay. So I think in actual fact, looking at this <gasps> way in time. Oh, there you go. And we're just about ready to finish. Do we have any other items that we haven't got, got anywhere that we can? Can I just ask through the chair the uh, invoice for the Martin Star? Has that been resolved? Um, oh, yes. I haven't seen it on, come through on the account. Okay. There was a, an outstanding invoice for which they sent through without the 20% discount. Mm -hmm. So we requested a new invoice. Yes. I can't see anywhere. But they haven't sent a new invoice. I not, that aware, not that I'm aware of. Didn't we email them to do that? I, I have emailed them to do it before I left on holiday, and I that's why I'm checking. Okay. I did actually send them through another email to check if they've done it yet. 
so they obviously haven't they I haven't seen anyone they have had some staff issues recently so some of the things that we were putting through got missed from the last okay. edition of the star because they were short yeah um maybe, maybe they have, it was having make sure it's not put into the next one and then taken completely out of yeah, yeah. Oh. so 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 there is still an outstanding can invoice you, register. Can you just see? Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've followed, followed that. For a result there. Okay. Could you see some of the name lines on it? Yep. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Yeah. All right. I believe we're at the end. Excellent. Mel, would you like to do a character Close us down. Yeah, sure. Fakataka te hau ki te uru, fakataka te hau ki te kina ki uta, kia ma taratara ki toi. E hia ki a nā te ātākura, he tio, he huka, he hauhu, tihei mauri ora. Yeah. Oh, Thanks very much for Maria, everybody. Thank you Thank all you. for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Thanks, Christine.